Witches rise up and return to your power. Witches rise up. Now is the hour. Witches rise up and step on to your throne. Witches rise up. It's time to come home. Welcome to Healing the Witch Wound Global Online Summit. Walking the bridge home to your sacred sovereign truth. We have traveled a long way through many lives together, dear friend. Remove the many masks behind which you hide. Let the heavy veils of your own deception fall to the ground. Take off your shoes, breathe deep. Feel the soles of your bare feet on the earth as she breathes you back to life, root by tender root, step by tiny step. Lay down your battled battle armor, wash away your weariness in the well waters of time. Come, gather round the fires of remembrance and possibility that we're igniting on the edges of your knowing. This summit is an activation, a global initiation exploring the witch woundings over the millennia that flows through our bloodlines. And as we heal these wounds together, We'll walk the bridge home in a grand reclamation of our sacred power. And witches, remember, you hold the wand. And I'm your host, Emer Stassen, and I'm delighted to welcome today's expert speaker, Kader Brown. Hi, Kader. Good morning or good afternoon for over there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we are spanning the globe today. And I'll say a few words about you, Kader. Kader is an internationally acclaimed ceremonialist, cowrie shell diviner, healer, intuitive, and teacher of psychological and spiritual awareness with over 35 years of professional experience. And your topic today, Kader, is earth and water, rituals to activate memory, healing, and belonging. So where would you like to start with all of that? Well, first I want to say thank you for inviting me to be part of this particular summit. I feel really honored and privileged and um, want to offer gratitude and acknowledgement uh, to the witches in my life and um, to my two daughters and my mom who has crossed over to the other side and my partner and um and the lineage of, uh, of women who lived close to the earth, bare souls on the ground, as you said, feeling the, those roots and reminders of uh, soil and soul um, and the weaving together of those, those parts of ourselves, the, um, the, those women in our lineage and in my lineage that um, like, braids of sweet grass uh, where the, the individual identity and the ancestral identity and the connection to the land, uh, the differentiation of them blended and woven together. And so that you couldn't really speak about one without the other. Um, it was the same identity. Um, so I just want to offer gratitude and gratitude to the medicine people um, that have carried these ancient rituals across time and generations so that we may even have these conversations because they themselves may have offered their lives uh, so that we can have this conversation today. So I want to begin with that gratitude. Um, then I want to start with an invocation. Um, since we are connecting with the, the other realm, the other world, and... Uh, as if to, to open a doorway of communication so that the spirits give me something adequate to say. <laughs> um, so I'm not found myself just bumbling around here under my own word power. Um, so I'd like to begin with a, a little bit of imagery and, um, and acknowledging of the, the directions and the, and the seasons and those various parts of ourselves. I want you to take yourself back to that place that was just mentioned, that place with roots growing out, the soles of your feet, to that place in nature that knows your name, 
that you are a familiar to, the place that recognizes you, whether it's you've been there physically or whether it's held only in the imaginal realm of conversation between you and the other world, uh, that sacred place, to those stones, to those forests, to those woodlands, to those hills, and see yourself standing in that place for a moment. And now turn and face the rising sun as if you are now standing there at sunrise. And we call upon the spirits, the guardians, the allies of the East, the place of springtime and new beginnings, the good medicine of the East that reminds us of how to see things for the first time every time. To look again with the, eagle, e the eyes of hawk and eagle and condor and kite. Those that remind us how to see the big picture and also how to focus on the tiny details in our lives. The good medicine of new beginnings and inspiration and vision, connection. We call upon that good medicine from the east to awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. With much gratitude. Ashe. Quarter turn to the south, facing the warm summer breezes, the noonday sun, the deep green vegetations of summer, and the busyness and activity of nature. <clears throat> we call upon the good medicine of the south and of summertime of courage and impeccability. <clears throat> that place where our words and our thoughts and our feelings and our actions are exactly the same. The pl place of pay playfulness and creativity and passion. The place where our dreams and our visions of the East manifest into form. So we call upon this good medicine of the East, I mean of the South and of summer and ask you into this global summit to awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live. Okay. And quarter turn now to the West, facing the setting sun, stepping into autumn leaves, bright colors on the ground and overhead walking down to the sacred well, to the river, to the water's edge there in the west, to the place of transformation and healing, to the place of the shaman, the priestess and the witch, to the place of the harvest and bringing in nourishment. We'll call upon that good medicine of the West into this global summit circle and ask that you awaken within each one of us that memory, that bone memory where you live as well. Okay. Quarter turn to the North. We face the spirit of winter. As we move toward those darkening days, those long nights, those deep snows. Mm. To the good medicine of the North in the place of surrender and letting go so deeply that spring is nudged into being at bulk simply because we let go enough. To the place of gratitude, prayerfulness, deep snow, sitting around the hearth fires and sharing stories with our loved ones. We call upon that good medicine of the North to come into this global summit circle to awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Okay. Facing skyward, 
We call out to Sky Nation, to our star sisters and brothers and others, the Grandmother Moon and Grandfather Sun. And Grandmother Moon, we thank you for shining down your light upon us, reminding us how to name those things that we often hold in shadow and bring them into the light over and over again. Grandfather Son, we thank you for showing up every day, even when it's challenging. Reminding us how to fall down seven times and get up eight, always eight. To the great star nations, we thank you for shining down your ancestral lights upon us and reminding us too that we can shine as a beacon of light by the way we live our lives so that you could see us from out there. With much gratitude to the great above, the great mystery, to abundance, possibility, and expansiveness, we call upon the good medicine of the great above to enter this global summit circle, to awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Okay. Bowing down, touching the ground, bellies on the earth. We breathe in and breathe out with the breath of the earth. Pachimama, Mother Earth, we thank you for reminding us home and of home and belonging in place. Reminding us that scarcity is an illusion only brought about by living out of balance with you. We thank you for all things green and growing and clean water for our elders and children. We thank you for this place that we all call home at this time. For reminding us that there are no borders of division between peoples human and non-human peoples, between nations, that we have one home that nourishes us and reminding us how to live in balance and to be nourished and nourish each other with much gratitude. We call upon the spirit of the earth to awaken within each one of us that bone memory, that soil and soul that reminds us of that connection to home. Ashe. Now we turn and face the fire in front of us and speaking through the fire into the realm of the ancestors. We acknowledge those seven generations and beyond that stand behind us. We thank you for your footprints and your heartbeats for your tears and your laughter. We thank you for dreaming us into this place at this time. And to those bright and shiny ancestors, those that lived well and died well, and those that are well in spirit at this time, we call upon your assistance in the healing of those troubled souls. Those troubled souls both caught between the worlds and those troubled souls in this world. We also call out to those ancestors that stand in front of us, the seven generations and beyond that beat in the heartbeats of our children and our children's children. And those yet to arrive here. We thank you to, for watching to see how we live our lives so that you will know what to do when you get here. We thank you for that trust and also that accountability that the way that we live our lives be an answer to your prayers and invite you now wherever you are if there are ancestors you wish to acknowledge to yourself as you're sitting there to speak their name silently to yourself with much gratitude to those lines, those bloodlines that come before us and after us.
helping us to remember who we are and the agreements we made in that world before coming here about what we are coming here to do and who we are coming here to be. With much gratitude, we welcome you to this circle, Ashe. And to the spirits of the land around you right now, whether it be in the mountains, the woodlands, the city streets, the forests, by the water's edge. We acknowledge the spirits of the natural world, the swimmers in the river, the crawlers on the ground, the four-legged and two-legged and winged ones, the plant medicine people and the standing tall people, the stone people. With much gratitude, we acknowledge those lands around us and call upon you to help us remember that we too are connected to the landscape. With much gratitude, we welcome you. Okay. And to the great council that sits on the other side of this fire, stirring the coals and keeping them hot, we thank you for standing by us. Those ancient fire tenders, We thank you for believing in us and standing by us, even when we struggle and fall and have a hard time believing in ourselves and each other. May the way in which we continue to tend the fires on this side be a blessing to all our relations, human and non-human, in this world and in the other. With much gratitude, Ashe. Oh, I think we're all here. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Thank you. Powerful. It takes me a minute to to refocus into this middle world and keep yeah. the, keep the door open. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for that. You're quite welcome. I wanted to. Um, at the at the onset of this, um, offer a poem. I'll put it in the chat box so that people can access it. Um, it's a poem that came to me this morning, um, just looking over the the title of your, of the summit and uh, the topic of conversation. Um, and it's a poem by Marion Darlington. Let's see if I can get it in the chat box for those that are watching. Okay. <clears throat> so a poem by Marion Darlington, and it's called Angels. Uh, let's see, did it go? Did it post over there? There it is. There okay. it is. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> so she writes, this is how angels come out of the earth upwards from the underworld. When everybody thought they came from light wings of the sky. No, they are massive on nights of rain and sleet, split the soil, splash and muddy the grass, wingspans as wide as lakes. Wearing mud armor, they crawl full length up rivers and streams, damn ditches, seep through drains, penetrate walls, barns, chicken coops, unsettle bats with their wing beats that shake down trees, reminding us, cradled in our prayers, how we like to remain dry, sheltered. This is how angels come, mouths full of earth, spitting verses of poetry. So I think of the, the, the ancient wisdom of the witches uh, when I read that poem. And uh, there's something about uh, the, the, over the, over the uh, 
uh, time immoral, how we've been forced out of, out of connection with the natural world, which eventually culminated into the extermination of the, the, the healers, the feminine healers, those that were most deeply connected uh, to the natural world. And, um, and everything turned toward the solar and away from the earth in terms of our religious uh, belief systems went skyward instead of down. Um, and so it's this, this healing of the witch wound, as, as we're talking, is really, in my way of thinking, um, the embodiment of that relationship with, with, the, with the planet Earth, with Earth, with soil, with soul, with um, uh, aligning our dreaming once again with the dreaming of the Earth. Um, is how I think about it. And, um, and so this, uh, the, the title of our conversation um, around earth and water and healing the wounds of, uh, was it memory, healing and belonging? Yeah. Rituals to activate memory, healing, and belonging. Yeah, yeah. particularly earth and water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, so just a little context: why earth and water? Yes. Um, the way I think about it, um, from a uh, from your ancient ancestral perspective, if you walk down your ancestral lines, no matter where you are, eventually you'll come to a time and a place. Whereas you and I were speaking before we started recording, like braids of sweet grass, the individual identity is also woven together uh, with the identity of ancestors and land, such that you could not speak about one without talking about the other. They were simply one and the same. Who I am, my ancestors, and the land from which we uh, uh are, are settled in are all the same identity. Um, and in those time and places, rituals, and of course there are thousands and forms of different kinds of rituals. Um, but when you think, what is it in, in ritual, what I call radical ritual, to differentiate between what might be called status ritual. I've heard those words used to differentiate status ritual being simply those kind of ceremonies or ritual that, that maintain the status quo. Nothing really shifts. There's no shift in consciousness or life station or responsibility. Where in radical ritual, there's an, uh, an element of mystery, unknown. We can even say surprise or ordeal. Um, and the, the active ingredients, the way that we think about active ingredients in medication, the active ingredients in ritual medicine uh, comes through the invocation um, in the alignment with our, our spirit helpers. And it comes through the involvement of elemental medicine, uh, fire, water, earth, uh, mineral, wind, Um, So these elemental forces uh, of a less personal nature, we can say, than ancestral helping spirits, elemental forces are simply what they are. They're not, uh, they're not personified as, as uh, uh, in our, in our human way of thinking, they're, they're pure uh, elemental medicine. And so um, we can think of if, if we're beginning around the medicine wheel in the East, say, if that's where we choose to begin, we think of East as spring and rituals of spring being those that activate vision, those that might involve song or communication or wind or the, the conveyance of, of, uh, of, of the transponding and transceiving of information um, in, in this this outwards we could call it a song it would be one version of a of a uh, a wind ritual something that involved voice uh, or calling on the wind um, 
And then we moving around the wheel, we come uh, from east and spring, we move into summer. Our vision begins to manifest. And so summer, we have the rituals of fire, those of action, those of transformational uh, medicine in the way that uh, is quick, those that bring courage, those that bring uh, the energy that's required to manifest the vision from the east. And then turning the wheel from, from the south, uh, we move into the west, into autumn, into, uh, to, to borrow from the, the Celtic wheel, we, we turn into, um, the word's escaping me for a moment, the harvest festivals, the Lunasa, um, um. The, this time of harvesting and, and bringing in uh, that which we have manifested in the South, um, the element of water, um, and also the aspect of healing, which is how do we allow ourselves to receive or don't allow ourselves to receive, and how, how this element of water nourishes life. Um, and then as we turn the wheel from, from water towards earth, towards north, towards winter, um, our ability to let go and surrender, which is proportional to our ability of self-acceptance and self-love, um, the element of earth and grounding and belonging. Um, and so often challenges, when I, when I work with people, challenges, be them ancestral, which often they are, that have to do with belonging and connection and uh, se self-respect and self-love. self, self uh, uh, love And like these are, require an element of earth medicine um, in ritual. Um, and if we were to back up on the wheel and toward, toward even um, receiving and allowing ourselves to receive support, we would back up into the West, into water, and often water rituals of cleansing and clearing and nourishing. Um, so the, the topic uh, of the, uh, the, the title of our conversation turned my attention toward earth and water very quickly as elemental medicine of these times. Um, I heard it when you, when you read the poem at the very beginning, I heard the, the, the speaking of connection with earth maybe water, I definitely heard the earth. Um, and so what is this that, that the, the ancient uh, ancestral medicine carriers that we've come to call witches, what do, what do they remind us about the necessity um, to connect with, with earth medicine um, and, to, and how we carry it in our own bodies? Um, and the disconnection from the natural world um, as I say, that culminated into, you know, years and years of inquisitions and annihilation of the feminine. Um, and so this, the, those run along side by side. Um, the disconnection from the body and the wisdom that our bodies carry. Um, and so in, the, in these times of... Uh, um, to, to borrow a title of a book that I can't quite remember the, um, the author of, but certainly uh, want to honor. It's called, uh, I think, When Women Rose Rooted. And I think of that. that Sharon Blackie. Yes, Sharon Blackie. Yeah. Um, that, that understanding that the, the, the maintaining our roots, connection to the earth, that uh, to live in a, in a to live in an age where spiritual bypass has really promoted a lot of notice. Everybody wants to be spiritual, but they don't want to do the hard work of uh, going down. Um, we say that when, when uh, there, there are two, two particular trajectories of initiatory passage, and one we could say is by water and one by fire. One, by, one is uh, uh, a descent and one is ascent. So initiation by fire, we would say, would be initiation by the spirit when I'm an ascent. 
want to be on fire with vision, with possibility um, to, to be possessed by a genie would be another way to think about it. And if you're not, if you don't have uh, the necessary guides or elders to help you navigate that kind of uh, initiatory passage, one of a, an ascent, one can die, not make it. Um, similarly, in all initiatory passages. And then the other being one of water, which is a descent. It's going down to the water, down under the water. It's, uh, it's about healing and memory and belonging and ancestral threads of, of, uh, that need acknowledgement and um, tending to um, soil in this, the, the, the soul, soul aspect of ourselves. Um, so these are initiatory descents into water. And so when mythology presents us with a story where we're going down, we can know that there's going to be a reconciliation of wounds <laughs> that's going to happen somewhere. And um, so I think of the water as that place of, of reconciliation and healing, forgiveness and flow um, that, that allows us to move toward the north, toward the earth, toward our sovereignty um, and standing in that sovereignty, um, unattached to outcome, connected to our integrity and um, as we say, that, that, that when you uh, die and go to meet your ancestors, you want to do so standing in, in your medicine and not somebody else's, living the life you came here to live and not some other version that somebody else would have you live. Um, and leaving all the medicine in the ground here before you go there so that somebody else can dig it up and make use of it. Um, so these ways of uh, these ancient alignments to the uh, elemental medicine that activates uh, healing and memory and belonging, centering around earth, earth rituals and water rituals. Um, so those are some initial thoughts um, <laughs> that, that bubble up to the surface. And we can, before we end our time together can um, offer up a couple of those specific yeah. types of rituals that one might do. Yeah, that would be wonderful. And um, what I was thinking, because it's very much representative of the journey I've been on personally and why I'm offering this summit as well of reconnecting, mm -hmm. going down, reconnecting with my roots, the water and these very feminine elements. Um, and, what I would wanted to ask you as well for people, you know, many of us have spread far and wide. You know, I live in Scotland, my home, it's mm -hmm. my second home, my other home is, is Ireland where I grew mm -hmm. up and where my ancestors are. What would you say to people that have traveled far and wide and maybe aren't on their ancestral land right now? That would be most of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Certainly over here, most of us. Yeah. Um, well, first the acknowledgement um, that, and, and that the, the grief and the, the longing for belonging that many people feel is not simply just their own. That there are lines and threads of connection um, of unresolved displacement and grief that travel like hungry ghosts through family systems uh, that can settle into our spirit. So when we, um, I can say this since I, since I have the, 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 uh, the experience of being in the background of psychotherapy and psychology and all of that, is that oftentimes we, we take those dilemmas and go to the, the, offices of people um, that are simply better at hiding their own displacements and turmoils than we are and ask for advice or healing <laughs> um, without, without there being any recognition that that displacement is beyond uh, human, mm -hmm. that you can't, one can't heal a state of uh, unbelonging or a sense of lostness without recognizing the need to connect to the natural world, to earth. 
It's, it's an incomplete healing, a human e egocentric way of thinking rather than ecocentric or soul centric. Um, so these, uh, so healing has to involve a reconnection uh, to the sacred elements of which we are all made of, you know, that, like that, that uh, chant that maybe many in the summit have heard, uh, earth my body, water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. Like we, we are made of these, of stardust and soil and, and, and water and, and, and fire that ignites our heartbeat. Um, and so without these, these connections to our ancestral elemental belonging, um, we, we, we limit a sense of wellness uh, to just our relationship with other human people and not, not non-human people. Um, and so uh, connecting that way, you know, is, is an essential component of healing that, that kind of brokenness, be it ancestral, um, to, to recognize um, when I say that these things you feel might not simply be your own, um, that they have ancestral threads connected to them, um, that, that they're in your, your own bone memory, um, that the, the families, families and the lineages, uh, if we just speak generally, speaking of the four lines of lineage from which we descend, um, you know, we, we also come into to further the evolutionary healing arc of what's broken in those lines um, through what we come here to offer. It's that, that wounded healer that as we heal our, uh, our own brokenness and our own displacement and longing for belonging, um, we become healers of belonging. Um, but first there's a kind of tending our own hearth fires. Um, and so this is a, an essential component as we look at, uh, again, to the, the title Healing the Witch Wound and the, the rise of, of, of the feminine is, is anchored in the earth. And it is um, to realign ourselves with, uh, with the, what I call the, uh, that our dreaming realigns once again with the dreaming of the earth. Um, and there are rituals of, of, of that kind of alignment also to align with dreaming of the earth. Um, so those are a few things that, that come to mind with your, with your question. Um, <clears throat> so you know, I want to pause for a minute, give you a, give you a moment to speak. Yeah. Uh, leave, leave some time for some actual ritual prescriptions. Yeah, that would be cool. um, It's really just really gorgeous listening to how you put words to all of this and our need to heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it begins there. And I think it's, uh, as my teacher once said, I had a, uh, to honor uh, Will Rocking Bear as a native, native American Cherokee teacher of mine said, um, we're sitting in a, community gathering and he was speaking and somebody asked him, you know, what do we do about all the violence that's going on in the world that's happening? And he said, we have to heal the violence. And he said, but I'm first talking about the violence that we do to ourselves in our own heads. We've got to start there. And it's very micro, this micro violences that we do to ourselves around denying nourishment or, uh, lack of self-care, self-belonging. Because um, if, we, if we bypass that, um, it's like we can't, we can't really give away what we haven't embraced. Um, whereas uh, another great quote that I love, by, there was a, a writer over here named Og Mandino many years ago. He said, if I said to you all of the things that you say to yourself about yourself, would we be friends? <laughs> And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, that's where we have to start. What are those things? <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, what are the self-saboteurs and the, and the messages of lack and less 
and, and how we've been brought up in a culture that uh, is based on um, better and less than thinking, um, which is a, a culture that uh, prescribes you with your own identity as opposed to the old way, which is you come in with that. Um, you come in with the medicine you came here to deliver. You come in with the identity of, of uh, connection with ancestors and uh, in the rituals and the rites of passage ceremonies were designed to activate the memory of that belonging, the memory of, th of those agreements that you made in that world about who you were coming here to be. Um, so they say all learning is simply remembering. Um, it's not that you need to be filled up with information from the outside and then handed an occupational handbook and say, now choose. <laughs> And that the old way of uh, the old way of the teacher was not to give you information, but to draw it out of you. Mm -hmm. you know, I was fascinated by the the uh, the origins of the word education come from the Latin root word educare. It actually means to pull forth, to draw forth from within, not to give you a bunch of information that you're to assimilate, figure out. Um, so that 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 way of, of uh, remembering that old way. And um, in this rise in the feminine uh, medicine, consciousness, aliveness that we see happening on the planet that's so desperately needed um, in uh, the ways of deep listening, the ways of perception and intuition and tracking and noticing uh you know, all the things that aren't being said that need to be said. Um, the naming of shadow. Um, like this, this global virus, um, as an old rites of passage guide myself, I see this global virus is in, in the phases of a vision quest, like there's a severance phase, the old identity we were severed from. Then there's this threshold phase um, of unknown uncertainty up on the mountain in the wilderness, you know, and, uh, and it's in that place where we will um, either connect with the sacred in some new way of, of walking forward um, or have an incomplete passage, meaning that we just try and grasp hold of the old story. Um, and then the return, you know, and are we returning with the awareness that, that we're walking into a new story and that the uh, as many wiser people than me have said before that we're that, that, the, that the, the walking itself will determine the journey that you don't know. There's no, there's no destination here. Um, or as uh, one of my favorite writers, Carlos Castaneda says that, you know, um, all roads go to the same place. They all go nowhere. <laughs> and uh, although some will have heart and some will not. And so at least walk the path of heart. Yeah. Um, Love that. So a couple of uh, ritual prescriptions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the suspense is killing people. I don't know. What are we going to do? <laughs> what do we do about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the how to manual now. <laughs> uh, so these are a um, couple of uh, simple rituals, and I'll give you a version that you can do if you do happen to have access to nature and outdoors, and one you can do if you happen to be in a city. Um, so one is uh, connecting with earth. Um, if you are able to gather earth from your, uh, from your uh, ancestral lands, that's good. But remember, all earth is connected. Um, if you can't, that's fine too. Um, if you can go outside and make an earth shrine, what we call simply a mound of earth. <clears throat> and within that earth shrine, I would say, um, and if you can't, the, the other version would to bring some earth into your apartment in the city, just find some and bring it in, put it on a tray. Um, and then get uh, a ring, 
any kind of a ring that is your relationship with, it speaks of relationship to earth. We'll say earth dreaming. And to get a small crystal and do this ritual on a, uh, a new moon night, those three dark nights. So the first, first of the three dark nights. Um, and at the beginning of the ritual, you want to speak an invocation. So, so invocation is simply uh, invoking the sacred by what names and understandings that you personally have to call upon the sacred to assist you in connection and also the connection with earth. Um, to um, make an offering of uh, a little bit of water. And if you have it, some ash, meaning uh, uh, wood ash of any kind. Ash represents uh, that which stands at the threshold between the worlds. And, and on the other side, we say it shows up as fire. Water is of life and is of this side. So water and ash together kind of are, are at the threshold between the, the other world and this world. Um, so those would be offerings that could be made to an earth shrine. Um, the ring that you have, uh, that is your, represents your relationship with earth dreaming um, and a small uh, crystal plant these inside the earth mound, the earth shrine on the first of those new moon nights. Um, then um, at, the, at the end of the new moon nights, say the fourth morning, um, to pull the ring out Leave the crystal, the crystals and stones and bones, they're transponders, transceivers in ritual space and time of communication. So there's, we're linking uh, a communication connection with earth dreaming. Um, when you take the ring out on the fourth morning after the three dark nights of the new moon, put it on. And you wear it on a finger, you wear it around your neck, just somewhere on your body. Um, and uh, and then keep a, a journal. Once you put it on, it would be good to wear this ring for a full year cycle. Um, and each um, each new moon, when possible. Uh, place it back in the earth and then retrieve it afterwards. So continually, that's what we call a maintenance ritual. So you've done the, the ritual activation and the maintenance is, is uh, over the course of uh, the, the new moons within a, a cycle of moons, of 13 moons, um, to reconnect each time, to keep a journal. Um, so that's about connection with earth. The other one uh, is more of an ancestral line clearing ritual. Um, and a, uh, a simple way to do this that, uh, is to get four uh, pieces of rose quartz stone. Unpolished is better, and I'll tell you why unpolished. It's a practical thing. Get four strands of red yarn. If you're doing this outside, you can do it in a stream. If you're doing it inside, um, have at least uh, a large enough pan uh, that's longer than 13 inches long. Um, and uh, so the inside version is you have water in the pan. Um, the, the four strands of red yarn represent your four bloodlines. Don't worry about adoption. They'll work it out on their side. <laughs> you don't have to figure that out. The four uh, rose quartz stones represents your connection to the bright and shiny ones, 
the ancestral helping spirits, those who lived well and died well and are well in spirit at this time. So I'm, I'm making a distinction between simply being dead and being a helpful ancestor. <laughs> These are two different states. There's an old Irish proverb that, that I love from, from uh, your homeland and my ancestral land that says that the troubles in the other world can only be healed from this world and the troubles in this world can only be healed from that world. And so it implies this reciprocal relationship of healing and tending um, between the, the ancestral helping spirits and the, those that are well here to heal and tend to the unwell dead and the unwell living. So the rose quartz don't simply represent anybody. They represent uh, the bright and shiny ones of each of your lines. And, and, um, and in this ritual over time, you may even get visions or connections or journal uh, uh, particular connection to one that's way, way back that just starts coming to you in, in dreams or in visions or thoughts um, in your imagination. And I remind people that imagination is not simply what we make up. Imagination is the realm that spirit communicates to us in. It's the language that spirit uses to, to reach us um, is, is our imagination. The imaginal realm is the language of, of spirit. Um, so don't ask the question, am I making this up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, I say as long as it's within your integrity and, and, and to remain impeccable to your integrity, you know, listen. Um, so the four rose quartz stones, the four strands of, of red yarn, 13 inches long. We could say 13 generations or 13 moons. It's 13 is a specific number associated to the feminine. Um, and in the end of these four strands of yarn, they all come together into one point. So if you imagine four strands and then they all come down, say in, if we're doing a pan, they all come down at the end of the pan and they tie around one ring. And that one ring um, is your relationship to these four ancestral helping spirits of your mother's mother's line, your mother's father's line, your father's mother's and your father's father's. These grandmothers and grandfathers all channel down to this ring. <clears throat> this can also be done in a small stream where the water doesn't run strong, where you can actually submerge these things in water and leave them. But you're going to leave them in the water. Similarly, you do this on a new moon night, get some uh, milk and honey, um, and pour it across the stones and in the water. If it's a running water, um, you can pour it um, over the stones so that the, the sweetness and healing runs downstream across the ring. Um, the invocation, and, and that's an important part, that your uh, invocation is that you're calling upon uh, those ancestral helping spirits of your, of your bloodlines. Um, those, again, I use the words, those that lived well and died well, and those that are well in spirit at this time. Um, those grandmother, ancient, ancient grandmothers and grandfathers that remember their connection to the land, that were connected to the land. Um, or those ancient witches in your line that you, you know from the imaginal conversations with spirit that live there, um, that you're calling upon these ones. Um, and so the pouring in the milk and honey is about sweetness and healing that travels down the line across the ring. After the three nights, once again, after the, the three new moon nights, uh, pull the ring out, um, put it on. Um, relationship to your ancestral helping allies. Uh, so relationship to earth, relationship to ancestral helping spirits. Um, the yarn itself can be put into the fire and the three, the four stones, the four rose quartz stones. Oh, by the way, the reason I said unpolished, it's so much easier to tie yarn around an unpolished stone than a polished one. That's the practical thing. <laughs> Somebody asked me that one time, why unpolished? I said, it's, you have to try tying yarn around the polished stone. It's, it's almost impossible. <laughs> um, so the four rose quartz stones can sit on um, 
an ancestral shrine or altar somewhere, um, you put on the ring and wear the ring. This is a little bit different. You wear it until the full moon. At the full moon, to prepare a celebratory meal, maybe preparing some of the ancient foods that you know your ancestors would have liked and eaten, make a spirit plate, and you thank them. You know, thank them for the blessings that throw that flow through each one of those lines and the teachings that come down. Um, matter of fact, the blessings and the teachings may be things to to listen for over over that month. What are the blessings and the teachings from this line that flow to me, that live in me? Um, because they each have blessings, they each have teachings. Um, one other thing, when when doing ancestral healing work. Um, if you run into an ancestral helping, well, if you run into an, an unwell dead um, in your line, that's not the one you want to work with. You know, you just thank you and you move on to the next one that seems in the three questions important to ask when you're envisioning and seeing ancestral helping spirits. Are you my ancestor? Number one. Um, are you connected to the deeper pool of love and wisdom and healing in our family line? Number two. And number three, will you help me? And of course, it's, if you get yes, yes, you're going to get yes. Um, and the litmus test for understanding ancestral helping spirits and those may be even benevolently intended, but less helpful um, is uh, ancestral helping spirits don't need anything from you. They're not going to have a long list of laundry items for you to go do. They're there to help. What It's like granddaughter, grandson, what do you need? How can we help you? Now, the unwell dead may have a long list of things they want you to do. Don't, 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 you don't work with them. <laughs> you might work to help them with, you know, on behalf of the, those that are well in spirit, but those aren't the ones you want to engage. So just a, a note of, of differentiation there. Same as like if we're working with human people, not all of them are well. And, and some well-meaning people aren't that helpful either. <laughs> um, same principles, just think about it across the line. So one is a, we would call a ancestral line clearing ritual. Um, I would say if you're one that is familiar with journeying, that you might want to journey to the ancestral realm to connect specifically with an ancestral helping spirit of each of these four lines before you do the ritual. If you're not, that's okay. The invocation will reach out to them. Um, and you don't have to be familiar with journeying. Um, so the earth ritual, um, connection with earth, belonging, um, remembering, um, and dreaming. So that, that um, once you have that ring on, it's connected to the uh, transponder and transceiver that's in the earth shrine. Um, and it's connected to you. So it's, it's about a, a ritual of realignment um, so that you can begin to listen once again to the heartbeat and, and the song of the earth uh, that your ancestors used to listen to. And then the, the ancestral line clearing is to uh, clear away any blockages of disconnection uh, or hesitancy or fear that was placed in those lines that have interrupted the connection to that to that type of medicine. Just, oh. That's really, really beautiful and, and nourishing as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I know viewers will have fun with that. I know I will too. Yeah, yeah, I'll be curious to, to hear if any of the, the listeners want to email me or, or let me know what happens. Just don't light your hair on fire. <laughs> yes, <laughs> do it safely. <laughs> oh, well, is there anything else? I, um, I wondered if you had time just to say a bit about Earth Dreaming before we wrap up, just because you've mentioned it a few times. So... Um, Earth dreaming. So when we think about, so you think about earth, everything that's present on the earth is comes out of the earth. So therefore we say it is dreamed into being from the earth. All species, all elemental forces. Um, well, certain elemental forces are went into the creation of, of, of earth. 
when we reference grandfather fire and grandmother ice or water, we're talking about those two elemental forces that then, uh, then we have earth and then we have species. So everything in that way of thinking, everything is dreamed into being from the earth. And it is our disconnection from that earth dreaming and the way that we've taken humans and kind of put them at the top of this uh, pinnacle of consciousness and disconnection <laughs> um, and see what a mess we've made once we've separated ourselves. Um, so it is a realignment ritual to once again align your dreaming with the dreaming of, of the mother. There is, uh, in some old rites of passage uh, initiation ceremonies well, with young men, where the the elders would come into the so they come into the village dressed in cloaked and and scary looking chalk and and making sounds with bull roars and they come in and they grab the young men that are that they have judged are ready and these young men think they're being you know captured by ghosts and taken out of the village and the mothers and the grandmothers are screaming and clinging and and they pull them away and of course after they're gone the mother's like. Thank God somebody came out of there. <laughs> um, but in the initiatory passage, there's this understanding of uh, that they are severing the umbilical cord of dependence and connection to the biological mother uh, with honor, with recognition that it has served them, that it has uh, given them life and enabled them to get to where they are. And, but that is coming to an end. And then there's a, an attaching to their connection to the greater mother. There's a transitioning so that they become in service to the greater mother, in service to the feminine, um, the earth. Um, and so without that initiatory, especially for men, that's why, why so much is screwed up because we have so many uninitiated masculine running around like a bunch of adolescents. Um, Without that shift happening, um, it's like they never severed the cord um, and stepped into the responsibility and the the stewardship and the in service to the greater feminine, um, which is the earth and the and the and how to move live their lives in service. It's it's why in a lot of mythologies, like the one over there, we have the Arthurian legends. So. Where did Arthur get this powerful sword called Excalibur? Where he got it from the Lady of the Lake. Of course, it was the feminine that bestowed when it was ready, you know, like to, to give him this to carry in service uh, to uh, Lady Sovereignty, we'd say. And Lady Sovereignty in stories over there represent the, the earth, the land, we say. And um, there's an old, uh, I don't know if it's Irish or, or Scottish um, saying that says, no man shall be given a sword until he learns how to dance. Uh, what that really translates to mean is no man shall be given, shall be bestowed power until they're deeply connected to their heart. Um, otherwise, they're reckless and they don't know how to use it. Um, and they become, you know, uh, E egocentric rather than ecocentric in their thinking. Um, and so earth dreaming is, is that. It's, it's a recognition that we need to reconnect. Um, and my thought in, in a lot of women initiatory society is very natural. Um, the, the, the reconnection is, is uh, much easier because, well, maybe not much easier, simply kind of to shed the cloak of, of consumer, um, a consumer society that determines one's identity. Um, but the idea, you know, the, the, the sense of being able to give birth and, light and bring life the way earth does, it's like the, the connection is, can be quick. Um, and so anyway, that's a few, a little bit of commentary on the trouble of the masculine these days. So we have a, we have, um, it's, it's uh, the patriarchy doesn't really speak to what's happening. I call it the uninitiated masculine, yeah. the adolescent boy that never grew up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's certainly been a thread throughout this summit. 
so yes. far. Yes. Spoken to. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. Just the, the two words together, the earth dreaming. Mm-hmm. And thank you for the rituals you've shared and speaking of earth and water and your invocation. It's been a wonderful journey. Oh, it's been, been my pleasure. My pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I know you've got a free gift that I'll have on your speaker page for people. Yeah, I would say that I that, uh, always uh, leave people with this one question. Um, I think it's always better to end with a question than an answer. Um, so it kind of tells you, gu- gives you some guidance of where to go. And the question that I like to end with is, in light of all that we have talked about today, and all that you've heard and all that you've understood, what actions are you guided to take now, this week? And when I say now, this week, I mean, keep it close in, not, not say, oh, what, am, what actions am I guided to take with my life? Because that's way too big. Um, but bring it close in. To, to use David White's phrase, start close in, like the poem. And uh, what action am I guided to take um, tonight when I go home with my children or this week with my colleagues and friends or this Saturday I happen to have a day off? In light of what, I, what I've experienced here, what action am I guided to take? Because so often we ask the question of what does something mean? And we forget that meaning is like water. It's fluid. What it means today will be different than what it means next year this time. Um, And we look for meaning as if we can, uh, if it's frozen in meaning, we can feel secure and nothing's ever frozen in meaning. Um, And so I learned from from my teachers to don't ask what it means, ask what actions I'm guided to take. Um, And this is where I say, if if the actions fall within your value system and within your integrity to do so, do it. And keep it close in and keep it small. Um, It may simply go go outside after watching this and feel the sun on your face. It might simply be that. Um, And then the second part of that is once you take the action, pay attention and notice what happens. Because often you will put yourself on a thread um, that's been waiting for you and you can start to follow it. Oh, gosh. Yes. The threads are waiting. Mm-hmm. And we walk the bridge home to our truth, to our song. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much for all of that. It's been such a You're pleasure welcome. speaking with you. You're watching. My, you. my honor and my pro- my privilege again to be on be on such a summit as this one (laughs) yes yeah the witches are laughing too (laughs) thank you Uh, um when you say the witches are laughing i'm reminded when i was a kid my mom uh she grew up catholic she actually didn't grow up catholic she was grew up in church of england but she became catholic and uh and she used to carry around this necklace had a little something i said mom what's in there and she said it was the bone of saint so-and-so and And i thought that's cool my mom wears a bone around her neck and this little thing is like and so in some ways while she was catholic i think my my mom was an old witch like wearing bones around her neck (laughs) oh that's lovely still connected to the earth and the mother (laughs) that's lovely thank you you're welcome you're welcome